All right, number four. If there's any corrections, I'll put it in the comment, pinned comment below. So I have a student of piece of clay and a rubber sphere, both the same mass. Both objects are thrown horizontally at the same speed, identical blocks that are at rest near the edge of the tables where friction between the blocks and tables is negligible. After the collisions, both blocks fall to the floor. In case A, the, the clay sticks to the block after the collision. In case B, the rubber sphere bounces off the block after the collision. Okay, in the figure above on the left, the arrow represents the momentum immediately after the collision for the clay block system in case A. And the figure below at the right, draw the arrow starting the dot represents the momentum of the sphere block system, the entire system immediately after the collision in case B. If the momentum is zero, write zero next to the dot. If the momentum is not zero, it must be represented by arrow starting on and pointing away from the dot. Length of the vector, if not zero, should reflect the magnitude of the momentum relative to case A. Now it's the same, let's just double check. Same mass. Same speed, identical block, external horizontal, same speed. Okay, so we know in collisions, momentum is conserved of the whole system, right? So I should expect that the momentum F before the collision equals the momentum after the collision because the momentum before the collision is the same. The momentum after the collision is also the same. So we just draw the same arrow like that. Okay, after the clay and block A collide, block A lands a horizontal distance DA from the edge of the table. Does block B land on the floor at a horizontal distance from the edge of the table is greater than, less than, or equal to DA in a clear, coherent... Oh, it's pretty straightforward. So they're asking you whether or not the block is going to go further. So here's what I would say. It's a major point that I would probably note in something like this. And I'm going to type this out just to give my hand a little bit of a rest. Okay, so I w it's, first of all, it's greater than. And let's explain the major points. So the major points is, why is it greater than? Is because when this guy bounces off, all right, so he's going to hit it and he's going to bounce off. And you could say if the momentum is conserved, and this guy's going to stick to it. So afterwards, both of the objects are moving to the right. This guy has a neg. If, if I say right is positive, this guy has a negative momentum. So this guy has to have more momentum to the right, right, to make the total the same as this one right? Or the same as before. So this guy has to have more velocity to the right in order for the total moment, because this has momentum to the left, he has to have more momentum to the right to make the total momentum the same, okay? That's one way to do it. The other way to argue it is also the rubber sphere has a larger change, in, has a larger impulse acting on it, thus it exerts a larger impulse on block B, thus block B moves with a larger speed. In either case, the first point you want to make is that during the bouncing off, we've imparted a larger velocity onto block B. So the first thing I want to say is greater than, is, and, and I'm going to use the impulse argument. You can use conservation of momentum, but I would say block, after the collision, after the collision, block B has a larger velocity because the sphere had a larger change in momentum by, by, by bouncing off, bouncing and going the opposite direction, which means the impulse was larger on the sphere compared to the clay block, clay. Thus, the imparted momentum onto block B is greater and because they have the same mass, block B moves at a higher speed than block A. Now, why does it travel farther? Okay, so 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 we haven't we've answered the first part, which is that it's going faster. Why does why does it moving why does the moving speed? You would say because both blocks, um, you know, um, are you know, uh, falling off the same a table of the same height, and block B has a larger initial horizontal velocity. It travels further. Uh, I would also want to note that it's the same time in the hair. Um, well, let's let's put it this way: as the same height in a horizontal direction, they are in the air the same amount of time. However, block B is moving faster in the horizontal direction. 
so it travels a further distance. I wanted to talk about the time in the air and the fact that the time in the air and the initial velocity to the right travels in a further distance, travels a further distance. I know it's a little unfair. I typed that up much faster, but I thought it'd be easier if you guys just see what I'm thinking rather than you, me doing my chicken scratch uh, handwriting there. Um, I think those are the main points that I would probably say. You could throw in some equations in here if you wanted to do this. Like you would say like, you know, delta, you know, delta x is gonna be v zero t, and v zero is bigger for like this is bigger for for block b. But that's that's pretty much it. That's all I would really say for that one.